we are. You have some out there that would, that, that would make others believe, or those that are new to the truth, would make them believe that we as a people have some, have some level of obligation to go into the land according to the law without Christ leading us into the land. Now, I'm going to make this clear. The Bible makes it clear. Christ is going to gather us into the land. All right? We're not supposed to. Now, if people want to take a visit, that's on them. But we're not required by law to go into that land. Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Most High thy power, the power of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land. When thou shalt go up to appear before the Most High thy power thrice in the year. So now we're going to go to where the Messiah kept the Passover as commanded by Moses. Matthews 26 and 18. And he said, Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with mine disciples. Matthews 5, 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from Torah till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So as we look in the history, we see that Moses gave a commandment to keep the feast three times a year. And we're speeding up to the time of the Mashiach, Yeshua. He kept the feast. Now, let's go look at the future prophecy 2,000 years after Christ during the time of the last days. And let's see if Christ go get people and bring them to the feast or the Most High uses men, which are the 144,000 in the last days who sought the master face of Zion and going back into the captivities to redeem his people for him. Psalm 43 and 3. O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to the tabernacles. Psalms 2 and 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. So as you notice, it said that holy hill. And now we see that holy hill is in Zion. Jeremiah 3.14 Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. So if you notice, these are men who are going to get people and bringing them to Zion. This is not one big gathering, but they're only coming by one by one or two by two. Jeremiah 3, 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3, 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them. So again, you see that the Most High is using men. These men are still considered the 144,000. Let's continue reading. Matthew 4, 18. And the Messiah, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So as we just read, those fishers that was Christ's disciples in the past, 
will be the same type of fishers in the future who will be going out and bringing men back into Zion, one of a city, two of a family. Obadiah verse 21. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. So all these men that went back out into the captivity and brought the Israelites back home into Mount Zion will be those pastors. They will be those fishers. And also these are the Mashiachs or the saviors that the Mashiach has called to go and redeem his people from the four corners of the earth. So Christ will not go and redeem people himself. He will use men and he will send them out these men are the 144,000. We're not supposed to. Now, if people want to take a visit, that's on them. But we're not required by law to go into that land. Move, talking son of a With my eyes towards the east, show me the way. It's going to come a time that who's ever in that land and stuck in that land, when Iran do what they're going to do according to scriptures, they're going to be totally dealt with and annihilated in that land. And what land are we talking about? The land of Israel. The land of Israel is going to be utterly decimated. So let's go to the scripture that Brother Ricard is referring to when he makes the statement that Israel will be totally decimated by the Medes? Or will Zion stand amongst all of Israel in these last days, according to prophecy? The book of Enoch, chapter 56, verse five. And in those days, the angels shall return and hurl themselves to the east upon the Parthians and Medes. They shall stir up the kings so that a spirit of unrest shall come upon them and they shall rouse them from their thrones, that they may break forth as lions from their lairs, and as hungry wolves among their flocks. And they shall go up and tread underfoot the land of his elect ones. And the land of his elect ones shall be before them a threshing floor and a highway. But the city of my righteous shall be a hindrance to their horses. But the city of my righteous ones shall be a hindrance to their horses. But the city of my righteous shall be a hindrance to their horses. But the city of my righteous shall be a hindrance to their horses. As you see, when the Medes go into Israel and go out pursuing and killing amongst the earth, Zion will be the only place that stand according to prophecy. Now let's take a look and let's see if the scriptures support the book of Enoch, that Zion will stand amongst all places in the earth. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 4. And said unto him, Run, speak to the young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. Verse 5. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Joel, the second chapter, verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. So 
Let's analyze this in Joel 2 and 15 through verse 19 or 18. As we can see that there's a people that was already in Jerusalem and they came to Zion in a hurry and they blew the shofar in Zion. And as you notice that there were priests there and this is showing that there's a portion of the priests that's in Jerusalem that gathered to Mount Zion. Also, these same people that ran to Jerusalem, that were in Jerusalem, that ran to Mount Zion, were praying for the Mashiach to return. So I want you to ask yourself, how did they get there? Was it UFOs or did they come on their own? Or did Christ went and gathered them and then went back in heaven and they prayed for him to return? Let's take a deeper look into this. If you notice that these same people were praying during the time that the curses were still on them because they asked the Most High, do not let the heathens rule over them. Joel chapter two, verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the Northern army and will drive him into the bland barren and desolate with his face toward the East Sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. So, as you see, the same army that Brother Ricard was referring to, the Most High have drove them away from the place of safety, Mount Zion, where his people dwell at. Baruch chapter 13, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that I, Baruch, was standing upon Mount Zion. And lo, a voice came from the height and said unto me, Stand upon your feet, Baruch, and hear the word of the mighty power. Baruch chapter 29, verse 1. And he answered and said unto me, Whatever will then befall will befall the whole earth. Therefore all who live will experience them. For at that time I will protect only those who are found in those selfsame days in this land. And it shall come to pass when all is accomplished that was to come to pass in those parts, that the Messiah shall then begin to be revealed. So those people that prayed for the Mashiach to return in Joel 2, well, he eventually heard their cry and he came. I mean, there were many nations that came up against Jerusalem. And you're going to find out that there was just a part of the city of Jerusalem that was taken. And that part is called Mount Olive. Today we call it Arad. And so let's find out what happened in the prophecy. Is all of Jerusalem is taken along with all of the earth? Or is Jerusalem will be a safety place amongst the whole entire earth as it is written in prophecy? Let's read it. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 2. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. So let's take a look and let's examine this. So in order for people to flee, that means that the Hamashiach had to be there after they got there. I mean, he did come back after the people, right? And the people did pray for him to return, right? 
So again, how did they get there? They got there because of the 144,000, the true pastors, those fishermen that we read about earlier in the scriptures. These are some of the men who are showing up right now in Jerusalem to seek Zion. And because they're doing this, and because the law is written on their heart to come back to Jerusalem to fulfill Torah as is Christ did, the Most High is marking them. Now those who we read about that were slaughtered, those are the unrighteous that came to Zion. And I can tell you now from going back and forth to Israel in Jerusalem that they're there right now and some are futurized to come there. So bottom line, return to Zion, the only place of safety. Shalom. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 11. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. So there's no obligation for Israel to go back and visit Israel three times a year. That's no obligation. Why? When we in the Old Testament had that obligation, let's get that three times a year out of scriptures. When we had that obligation, brothers and sisters, there was a temple to go to. Right now that land is being ran and that the temple that's established over there is the temple of Satan, is the devil. What did you say, nigga? <laughs>As you can see, Brother Ricard called Mount Zion Satan's seat. So let's go into scriptures and let's see how the Most High looks at Mount Zion from his perspective. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto their prayers that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And that the temple that's established over there is the temple of Satan, is the devil that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. So, again, we see that the Most High has made a statement that he looks at his place, his holy mountain Zion, where his name is at, and his eyes and his heart should be there forever. But let's do this. Let's make sure this is Mount Zion where his name is at, because some people like to say that his name is wherever we at, which is another of the Hebrew Christian-like doctrine. Let's find out where his name is at, and let's see if it's Mount Zion according to scriptures. Psalms 102, verse 21. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. Beautiful. So according to the scriptures, that the most high name is in Jerusalem and it's forever. So who's wrong and who's right? The most high or brother Ricard? So is brother Ricard calling the most high resting place Satan's seat? Shame on you, brother. For that, you may enter the lake of fire. Psalms 87, verse 1. His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Again, 
This brother just called Mount Zion the seat of Satan. Hmm, who's really Satan? In the name of his son, the Amashiach Yeshua. I come to speak about our people here and the traditions and ordinance and the instructions and the difference between culture and religion. We, the people who seek the master face in Zion, understand that the culture must be kept in these last days of our people. You either can choose to be a Hebrew Christianite or a Hebrew Israelite. We keep the ordinance as it is written. Torah as it is written, we continue the feast as it is written, according to prophecy, the Red Sea will not dry up. Again, the Red Sea will not dry up. You have our people coming out here in Egypt, in Hergada, thinking that they're going to cross the Red Sea. When they read uh, uh, Isaiah 11, they think that is not cross the Red Sea. They think that what is called uh, uh, an Al Jabal's or whatever it's called, that that's the real Sinai. His sister is doing evil, and his brother uh, is doing evil, teaching people to come over here. This is false doctrine. Do not seek these people instructions, because it's not of the Most High. It is of the heart, it's of Hashidi's brothers. They are putting 23-year-olds and 27-year-olds as elders. This is how you know that they're not of the Most High. According to the scripture, the elder was somebody of 50 and up. These elder, elder is a person who can show you uh, a wisdom who's been through a lot, who's been through wars and tribulation. These men are in error. They are not of the Most High, They're but, but they are of a Hashatan. They will suffer the sword of the Most High. These people are coming over here on a false pretense of a church, the GOCC church. We're not no church. We are people. We are a nation of Israelites. This is how you know that they're teaching false doctrine. You gotta come over here and, and, and you can't come over unless you come over through their doctrine or you pay a certain money. These are the false pastors that will seek the sword of the Most High when he returns. We're fishing for warriors. The only true teachers will come out of Zion according to the prophecy, not nowhere else, not America, not a Europe, not, not, not uh, uh, Egypt anywhere else but Mount Zion. So if you're not a seeker of Mount Zion, you might as well cancel yourself of being one of the prospects. What we're doing, again, we're fishing for warriors as it is written. All those who else wanna stay in the camps, you stay in the camps, you deal with that, but we are Israelites. When is your your, your name of your camp, IUCPK and GOCC, or any of these written in Torah, written in the scriptures? I don't see any of them. All praises to the Most High, Fa'i, Ya'i, Ala'i, our Master, our King, who has given us understanding of Torah and teaching the culture throughout the four corners of the earth. Our men are waking up, that are coming to Zion, and these men are warriors of the Most High. They are, sp they are spiritual warriors of the Most High. These men are particularly a peculiar man of the Most High that he has chosen, that heard the call that came out of Mount Zion. Please, I bid you brothers to seek the master face before the destruction comes in Egypt. I, I bid you to seek the master face, not these elders, these false elders, these guys who pretended to play church. They are wicked men. They are nothing but wicked men who, just, who seek to destroy you and control your Torah. There's not one man that should be teaching your wife. Not one man should be merged in your wife. This is the difference between religion and Hebrew. We teach that every man should emerge his wife and his child. Every man would teach his, his family, his wife, not any other man. If a man ever tried to teach my wife, he would be slaughtered. Simple as that. According to Torah, according to our culture, no man taught another man's wife. But these religious fake false pastors are trying to teach your children, teach your wife, and then your wives look up, look up to these men and you wonder why they're, they're, you, your wives are looking for these men as, as, as the pastors of the women in the church to do the pastor. You understand? Understand the Torah. Understand the culture. Which what we teach? The culture coming out of Mike Zion. So we ask you brothers to prepare yourselves, prepare your families, 
to come to Mount Zion. We know by you coming, we know that the 144,000 are out there. And we know that they're going to show up. Every man that's bound and every man that are unbound are part of the 144,000. And the man who come that are not bound at this time will release those who are bound by prison, child support, and everything else. All praises to the Most High. Fa'i, Ya'i, Allah'i. Let me just say further. According to Torah, we building a, a brotherhood in Mount Zion. We're not building nothing else but a brotherhood. Where is your camp written in, in the Torah of the Tanakh? Where is IUCPK written in Tanakh? Where is GOCC written in Tanakh? Where is IUC, whatever the other alphabet names are written into Tanakh? They're not in Tanakh, but these are doctrines of devils. These are not the doctrines of man. So we ask all those men who are in these camps to seek the most high face. The 144,000 would seek the master face and that's it. Not no false elders, not no false deacon, not no bishop, but only the master face. They will only follow the master face as it is written. These are the men who will be efficient. These are the men that will be warriors of the Most High. Are you one? We know you out there. Are you one? Are you one of the warriors of the Most High? Are you one of the men of the 144,000? We're not saying that we, we know who the 144,000 is, but we know that they are show up in the Mount Zion in these last days. It's complete and fulfilled Torah as it is written, as their master is written. What's happened is that these brothers, they don't even understand the culture that they're claiming to be. They don't understand that in the past, our forefathers went to Zion when they were in trouble or when they came out of a captivity. These brothers don't understand that our, our forefathers uh, uh, was was teaching them about the spirituality of the Mashiach and of Torah and that's why the prophets was killed. Now today these brothers don't understand the physical of Torah and that's why they seek to kill us. Understand this, according to as it is written, there's a balance. There's spiritual and there's physical aspect of Torah that will fulfill the understanding and that the 144,000 will come to Mount Zion. We have brothers who have not complained one bit. They set themselves set apart from the other man and they set themselves apart from the wives and their children to seek the master faith as the disciples of the Hamashiach did. As Peter, Peter made a statement. We left our wives, we left our children, we left our homeland. What are we going to receive out of this? And the master told the crowd, they were an example of the 144,000. The scripture says the first shall seek Zion. The first shall seek Zion. Will that be you? Will you be one of the men who seek the master face? And if any man do not seek the master face as it is written, according to the Tanakh, he will be slaughtered. His wives will be given away. His wife will be given his way as well as his lot. According to Torah. Isaiah 65, read that. Uh, Isaiah 65 and 10. Sharon shall become a pasture for flocks and the valley of Achor, a place for cattle to lie down. For my people who seek me. So who is seeking the Most High? Are you seeking the Most High face? And this does not mean pray in your captivity. This means come to the Mount of, of Zion. This means come to the Mount of Zion and seek the Master face. And that's for repentance. And keep the feast in the ordinance as it is written. Read. But as for you who forsake the Lord. So you. These are the men who are turning away from the Most High Holy Mountain. Don't want to come seek the Master face. What's going to happen, Reed? Who ignore my Holy Mountain. Who did what? Who ignore my Holy Mountain. These are you false pastors out there telling people not to come to Mount Zion. Not to seek the Master face. Not to seek the place of the Master throne where he will walk in coming from the east. You will be the ones that the Master would destroy according to Torah as it is written. Read who set a table for luck and fill a mixing bowl for destiny. Read, meaning that you're gonna be the same ones that work and continue to worship the anti mashiach and work in his system. Read, but these brothers will be set apart. These brothers will be the, be the undesirable as it is written in Tanakh. Read, I will destine you for the sword. So the most I will put you to the sword because you refuse to seek his face in Mount Zion and ask for repentance your arrogance and your pride. All these wicked so-called elders, elders that's 20 years old, elders that's 30 years old, it's a lie, it is not written as such. These are false pastors. These are men who play in the role of the Mashiach. And so according to the Tanakh, there are nine scriptures that talks about 
pastors. Eight of them are talking about pastors that will be destroyed. And the true pastors will only come from Mount Zion. That's only spoken about one time when all the in all the, the scriptures that talk about pastors. They will come and emerge from Mount Zion. You will see your teachers, and they will only come from the most high set apart place. Read. You will all kneel down to be slaughtered. You will be slaughtered according to the Tanakh of the Most High. Read. Because when I called, ye did not answer. So when the Most High will use his enemy to slaughter you, we don't have to do anything. We're going to continue to seek the master faith, and he's going to use the enemies of his of the other nations to kill you and to kill your children and to kill your wife according to Tanakh. This is what's going to happen to you if you don't seek the master face when the door is open. Be aware, my brothers. Do not be deceived by these false teachers. Again, I continue to say this because they're out there and they're preaching it and they're teaching against the kingdom of the Most High that is being restored at this very moment in Mount Zion. Read. When I spoke, ye would not listen. Read. You did what I hold evil and chose what I do not want. And what do he do not want? He did not want you to keep the feast in our captivity. You're choosing to keep the feast in, 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 in every place else besides Mount Zion, besides the Mount Zion place where he's set apart. And they're telling you that that's done away with. That's the old law. And rather than that, you see brothers flipping their hats like they're seals or something on stage, looking like coons and buffoons with their children talk about this is the Passover and people are clapping and applauding that you will be slaughtered by the Most High and we do not applaud that but that's what's written in tonight we want our brothers to repent and come as one stick as it is written to Mount Zion and it will happen a third of you of our people will be destroyed by the Most High using the enemies of Israel prepare yourselves the war is at hand the spiritual war is happening all praises to Fa'i, Ya'i, Ala'i, our master, our king, and his son, our prince, Yeshua, the Hamashiach. So be it.